I'm gonna start with the mother figure for you. Okay. So um, your mom's still here in the physical world? Yes. Okay. So know that it would be your grandmother, very, very strong soul. Mm -hmm. She talks, your grandmother talks, she goes, all right, enough of that. <laughs> just walk my this. She don't care. She just walked my, <laughs> she just walked my, I go, you just walked in front of all the other dead people. She goes, I don't care about them. <laughs> hey, ma'am. But that would be her. Mm -hmm. Did she have a nickname for you? Mm -hmm. I don't know what the nickname is because I went to call you Monique. She says, I didn't call her Monique, so don't you call her Monique. Mm -mm. I had a special nickname for her, so I'm like, what is it? She's like, you're not going to get it. I'm like, okay. <laughs> yes, she did. Wow. Yeah. Before anybody knew I was Monique, my grandmother did. Mm. Before anybody applauded for me, but if anybody told me I was special, it was my grandmother. She let everybody know I was the favorite. She was unapologetic about it. You know, like most people like, I don't have no favorite. She let them know, Nikki, Nikki, I love her. The rest of y'all, I mean, you know, I'm your grandmother, but Nikki, though I can feel my grandmother, I haven't had a chance to hear her. So I knew that if I came and talked to Teresa, that maybe I would get a chance to hear her. She tells me that she guides you Mm -hmm. You have like a sitting chair in your bedroom or something? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I see her sitting right in that sitting chair mm. to validate for you that her guidance is always there. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Mm -hmm. With my grandmother, mm -hmm. is she there all the time? Not when you're showering and having intimate moments. Okay, Teresa, <laughs> I wanted to check now because there's some things I don't need my Mimi to see, baby. That's why I'm like, let me check. People always <laughs> ask that. Absolutely not. Okay. Well, listen, okay? Now, I'm a newlywed. Though I've been married for 10 years, I'm still on the honeymoon. And there's some things I don't choose for Mimi to be in the room seeing, and there are chairs in the bedroom. And it's a, 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 a chaise, two chairs, then it's a sitting room, sugar. When I'm honeymooning, I don't need you in there, Mimi. Um, oh, let me ask you this. Do you have a piece or you have something of an heirloom? Yes. Yes. I don't know how you obtained it, however, but I don't feel that it was so easy to do. Does that make sense? It wasn't. She made me feel like it wasn't even of anything of value. It had no monetary value whatsoever, but the value of what it meant to you meant everything because it meant so much to her. That heirloom is my grandmother's wedding ring. And she had to go into the hospital one time. She had gotten really sick and we had to remove her jewelry. And that ring was so hard to come off because she had had it on for almost 50 something years. So we had to work to get this ring off. And once I got it off, she looked at me and said, I don't ever want to put, I don't need that no more, baby. Now, the wedding rings may cost about $22, but they so special, because to wear those rings, you got to know you got to carry your mighty stick, baby, because that ring belonged to Lillian Easley. So when spirit steps forward and they show me the holding of the hands and the whispering of the ear, that is my symbol for that we feel we did not get the opportunity to say goodbye. I wasn't there when my grandmother died. Okay. So, but you were always there for her. Mm-hmm. You should tell me you were working. Mm-hmm. So know that she says, because I wouldn't have had it any other way. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say this, but I think you know this. She said to me, there's no way I could have let go if she was there. Mm. So know that this is your grandmother's way of validating for you that nothing was left unsaid, mm. but more importantly, everything that you say to her, she hears you. Wow. Validating that she is watching over. My grandmother went to her next journey seven years ago. And I did not attend the funeral. I had no plans on it because we sat on her bed one night and we held hands and we said, whoever go first, no sad tears. I see you on the other side. And we stuck to it. I've not cried one sad tear for my grandmother since she, I've cried, but not of any sadness, just of, I was so grateful of the moments I had with that woman named Lillian Easley. Hmm. Okay, so this is where they come. You know famous people that died? 
Yes. Now, I knew Richard Pryor. Did you go to attend his funeral? I did. Did you speak at the funeral? Yes. Okay. Because he told me that he wanted to thank you for what he, you did for his family. I understand that. See, at that funeral that day, it was so thick. Yeah. And it was so separate. Mm -hmm. So when I got up there, I spoke on the separation. Mm -hmm. I don't think I was speaking. I don't think I was in charge of what the words were coming out, but they were just coming. See, this is the thing. We do things in our life every day that I don't think we realize the impact that we have on people. Yes. And that's what he's thanking you for. To be a part of Richard Pryor's memorial was surprising because I didn't feel like I had earned the right to speak at such greatness, about such greatness. So when Jennifer Pryor said, Monique, would you speak? It took me aback. You're talking about a little fat black girl from Baltimore, Maryland, baby, that I don't deserve to be in that group. But she said to me, wow. She said, Monique Richard talked about you all the time. And I said, OK. <laughs> um, so I asked your grandmother, I said, what was the purpose of Richard Pryor coming forward for? And she said it was another reminder for Monique to never stop doing what she's doing. Mm. Richard Pryor is partly responsible for my freedom on the stage. I met him at the premiere of The Kings of Comedy. And this one, he was in the wheelchair, and the MS was really taken over. And I went over to him because it was like, wow, this is Richard Pryor. And when I went to grab his hand, he pulled me in close as if I want you to come down so I can say something in your ear. And that man said to me in my ear, don't you ever change. If that's not validation, I don't know what is. And I've had people to say to me, Monique, that mouth of yours, it won't get you far in this industry. You cuss too much. Oh, oh. I remember what one of the greatest comedians to ever do it said, don't you ever change. So it changed my life. So what the things that you were going to talk about in Richard Pryor's stand-up? Because I heard, don't steal my line, bitch. <laughs> I said, I am not saying that to Monique. <laughs> that is hysterical. Yes. 